All right, guys, this is Vinny Chopra again from Syndication Made Easy podcast. I hope you're liking the content and you're giving us five-star reviews. Remember, if you give us five-star reviews and even written reviews, I read every single one of them, you know, please, that will rank us higher and higher and we can get great guests for you. Remember my new book, not new, actually, it's a top seller book. We are giving it for free free digital copy. If you don't mind, just go to vinichopra.com forward slash free book. That's all you have to do. Just go to vinichopra.com forward slash free book. We got great guests here. We got great guests here. David Melvin is in the house. I'm so proud to know him. Let me introduce, and we're going to talk so much about entrepreneurship and you know how to really he started in the business and he's become now one of the best copywriters and marketers and helping businesses and also he had a you know like at 47 had a bankruptcy and so some of you you know might be going through some tough times but it doesn't matter what comes in life it's what you do after that so we're going to dig into all those things you know, Dave, he lives over there in Jacksonville area, and he's been, uh, you know, he's been in uh, 30 years or so more. Uh, the, he has been self-employed entrepreneur and uh, investor building sales, marketing, and global distribution channels. Dave's companies have generated over a quarter of a billion dollars in sales. He has been married with his lovely wife, Beth, for over 30 years and has two adult children, uh, David and Rachel, wonderful people. At a very young age, uh, Dave saw the opportunity in real estate and uh, purchasing Carlton Sheets. Actually, I bought that too, Dave. <laughs> Carlton Sheets, you know, of course, way back when. And then, of course, he has done so many flips and uh, 50 properties bought and sold. Then uh, again, at 47 uh, companies filed for, one of the companies filed for, and then he nearly lost everything. What sustained him was the parachute built into his wealth formula. So we're going to dig into that one. That's going to be very exciting. And then of course, you know, his passion right now is to helping entrepreneurs to find clarity of vision and purpose and uncovering how to successfully start, run and grow the businesses while, you know, obeying the laws of the wealth. So we're going to dig into a lot of things and I'm very fortunate to have him join our team also helping as a consultant. So welcome, Dave. It's such a pleasure to have you, brother. Thank you, Vinny. And thank you for having me on the show. I, I'm always happy to see your smiling face. <laughs> take us back, you know, so you grew up in the Jacksonville area, kind of take us from humble beginnings and kind of share with us how you got into entrepreneurship mind and what will it take for anybody who wants to step into as an honor, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. So um, I came to Jacksonville in 1987 from Wisconsin. It was cold, came to Florida. Um, I have always been an entrepreneur from a very young age. And, and when I say from a very young age, I'm talking, um, I got in junior high school, I got suspended because I was selling so much candy at the school because um, I would buy it at the store and I'd sell it at a profit. And I got in trouble. They didn't like me competing with the lunchroom, apparently. So, but I, that goes way back. But uh, my wife and I, um, we purchased our first investment property in 1992. That was a duplex. Yeah. And what that allowed us to do is once we got it fixed, we lived in one side and, and, and ran it out the other side and we lived for free. At yeah. that point, I was hooked on real estate because I realized if I just keep doing this, generating income, no matter where I live, I could always... Hi. You are listening to Syndication Made Easy Podcast. We will be right back after this short break. Hi, thank you so much. This is Vinny Chopra. And thank you for subscribing to my podcast and uh, YouTube channel and Facebook pages and all the great things and LinkedIn. Connect with me. I come live to you every Friday at 9.30 Pacific with Vinny and Bo show. Please also look at that. And also the podcast, which is my apartment syndication made easy. The book I wrote two, a couple of years back, 
became internationally top seller uh, on Amazon International now. And then we like to bring great guests for you every week or a, twice a week sometime to give you a lot of great knowledge. So please subscribe. You give us five star reviews on the iTunes. The better the guests we can you know, bring and our ranking will go higher also. Thanks again for uh, following us and really getting the most out of it. Please comment, like, share, because we would love to bring better and better material for you. I realized if I just keep doing this, generating income, no matter where I live, I could always potentially live for free. And so, um, but my passion is always in building companies. And so sure, we've done the fix and flips. We've done um, we've done small multifamily, and that's what I'm, uh, you know, today my focus is on larger multifamily um, syndications, as well as um, uh, mini storage, uh, because what I think makes us unique, Vinny, is that uh, my wife and I, is that we've always found where there's a problem in the market, we find a way, there's two sides to real estate. You can buy all the real estate you want, but if you can't turn it into cash on the other side, you have a big problem. And so we always have tried to find these uh, these holes in the marketplace where, for instance, in, in 2016 and 2017, a lot of people couldn't sell their houses. So we were able to uh, use creative financing and, and acquire a lot of properties during that time without much money. Without, and, and so um, today, the real estate market is facing some similar challenges, especially in, in states where COVID is, is a big problem. So um, that's why we're looking at multifamilies because there's opportunity and and that's why you and I what's well, what brought me to you I read your your book syndication uh, made easy apartment syndication made easy great book and I've read it a couple times now so that's that's kind of a little overview of of my history so. oh thank you thank you so much no that's so great so as an entrepreneur I know we always have felt you know that this can bring better lifestyle and everything but it also brings lots of hard work isn't it i mean many many sleepless nights and lots of ups and downs and everything can you think back like you know when things were going really rosy and you were starting a lot of companies what were some hardships that you had well i've been sued a couple times um and and, you know it's funny the first time it happened um for a year, I thought I was going to die uh, because I felt so much stress. Yeah. And um, after a year and one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in attorney's fees, my attorney put his arm around me and said, "We won." I said, "No, you won. Um, <laughs> I didn't win." Um, but but you know that's the thing about being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, there are always challenges, and, and so I think that it, it what determines an entrepreneur is not how many times you get knocked down; it's really how many times you get back up. Yeah. And um, and the reality is that there's a mindset that comes along with that. But I also believe, uh, I know you mentioned in my bio, um, I have a wealth building formula that I've created over a period of time. It starts, I mean, I'm not going to go in depth into that. But one of the things about the formula is no matter how much money you're making in a business, you need to invest in other areas, real estate being one of them. You need to build retirement funds for the future. You need to make sure that you have insurance in place so that you don't have major catastrophes, um, all of these protections. And then once you've had all that in place, then you need to focus on cash flowing assets. And it was because of those other areas that I had been investing that I had a manufacturing company that really had just, it, 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 it was a 19 year old company and it had lived its cycle. All businesses have a cycle. I mean, I never thought in my lifetime that um, you know, I, I actually wrote a blog at one time about Sears, how to go broke on four and a half billion dollars in profit. The year they filed bankruptcy, they had four and a half billion in net profit. Now, wow. that that just tells you that every business has has a life. Amazon one day may, may have a life. So, yeah. And so I think the challenges, Vinny, that come along, um, probably the biggest one for many people is, should I start a business? Should I invest in real estate? Should I become a real estate investor? Um, and and the, the answer is, well, only that person can answer that question. But if they have this desire in their heart, then my recommendation is always, look, get a coach. Don't yeah. try to do this stuff on your own. Anybody can learn to do something on their own. Well, why not, you know, why not follow somebody who's already gone through all of the troubles? 
all of the all the struggles. It doesn't mean you won't have struggles, but when you have a coach, mm-hmm. it means you've got somebody you can say, "Hey, okay, I'm running into this." Oh yeah, I remember that happened to me, you know, ten years ago. And that's and what you a can coach save does. Thousands of dollars. I mean, thousands and thousands of hours, maybe or hundreds of hours of paralysis and overemphasizing and uh, fearful. I, I think my success, I'm sure everybody can relate and yours is because of the training you got, like the training I got, I wouldn't be where I am today if I had not invested in myself. You know, it's investment in yourself in coaching and mentoring uh, somebody who can show the path, you know? No, I see your point, really, really. Well, always, I think pe- people don't, you, I read blogs all the time and you could go on any of the big real estate uh, blogs and mm-hmm. a lot of people on there are like, oh, you don't need a coach. You can learn this on your own. And, and that, you know, I think about like little league baseball. Okay, yeah. imagine telling those kids, you don't need a coach. That's just, yeah. that's just awful advice. The reality is real estate is easy to get into. It's easy to get into debt. It's easy to get into trouble in real estate. People don't know how easy it is to get properties, but it's not easy. Once your name is on that contract, it's not easy to get out. So, um, you know, real estate can be a crippling thing. Business is the same way. A business can consume your life if you let it. And so um, setting up a business in a manner that that, uh, you and I have even discussed this, in, in a manner that is the way you want it to look. It, it, a business is supposed to be set up. Well, the only way that happens is you've got to have somebody you can look to and say, hey, that person has a business and, and it, they their business looks like I want to have a business. doesn't mean we have to be in the same business. It just means you have- I a- love what you just said, really, Dave. I mean, you and I have had revelations because you know, you're so right. A lot of people say, I want to have cash flows. I want to have uh, businesses and companies and everything. But then you are not really working outside the business. You're working in the business and you're occupied and stressful and, you know, not have time for really enjoying the smell the roses, I call it, right? You know, take time away with the family, vacations and things like. So it's so important to align your goals, your what you want to accomplish with your goals of the business as an entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, that gets you more free time rather than getting consumed by the business. You're working outside the business and seeing the business prosper, you know? No, I see your point. Uh, so, So the key thing I find is that it's so good to visit with a coach and then sit down and look at all different avenues and then come up with a good business plan rather than just shooting in the dark, right? Yes, that's right. And and I think with a coach, see, what a coach doesn't, a good coach will never make you a clone of the coach. What a good coach does is they teach you, okay, this is is my system. This is how I do things. Now you take your knowledge and your experience in life and you marry it to that. And you build your way through this, you know, through this industry, whatever that industry is. And so it's not always, you know, there are so many things you you go on TikTok or YouTube or anywhere. Everybody's got, this is the easiest way to start a side business. And they, and they, you know, all of them are selling courses, but very few of them have ever gone through the longevity and the roller coaster ride that is being self-employed. And, mm-hmm. and so, you know, Robert Kiyosaki talks about, you don't want to be on the left side of that quadrant where you um, were first you're an employee or, or you're self-employed, pretty much the same thing. You want to move over to the investor side and in order and, and business owner side, in order to do that, you, you really do need some guidance from somebody who, who has moved over to that side. It, it doesn't, I mean, it's not, it's not an easy transition if you, if you try to do it on your own, because you're going to try to do it on your own. And then you're working in your business and it doesn't work that way. You have to think like an investor. So, so true. So true. Dave, I was just thinking about like the syndication business we are in. Right. And you, you know, the key thing is there are so many facets. I wrote the book with five plates to make it simple, but when we dig deeper into the plates, we find there are so many different facets 
of different responsibilities of having people to, you know, forming the teams, of course, getting to know the syndication attorneys, then the real estate attorneys, then you got into the brokers uh, to find the deals, then underwriting the deals, then you get the loan qualifications, then the loan brokers, to really qualify, you got to find out if you're not the principal, who's going to be on the loan. <laughs> and then, then we go into the other spectrum, who's going to manage the asset, have the third party property management companies. Now that is there in place. Now comes the investor's plate, which is a huge one, even in the starting to close on the deals, <laughs> but then investor relations and making sure that things are happening. So it's a gambit of things. Yes. So, so, so as an entrepreneur, you got to decide where you are good at and what can you do it on the paper and then bring some other people in, uh, in your team, which will be able to take care of and complement each other. We shouldn't be, you know, partnering with people who are similar to us because then it's not going to complement that. Would you, you say know, that is very, very true in any business? Yeah. Yes. And so one of the, one of the exercises that I, I do myself a, a couple of times a year, and I always recommend entrepreneurs do this, is to take an inventory of what you do every day and do this for about two weeks, everything in, in 15 minute increments and, and just record what you do. And mm-hmm. then go back at the end of the two weeks and grade those on a, either an A through D or one through five. Mm -hmm. And one means you absolutely love it. I love doing this. Five means you absolutely hate it. Mm -hmm. And so what it does is it, it literally shows you the things you have to delegate first. You take all the fives and say, I need to hire somebody who can take care of all my fives and then all my fours. And eventually what you end up becoming as an entrepreneur is you do all your ones and you let you outsource or delegate all the rest. I say outsource, it could be insource, but it's it's a way to become an effective entrepreneur. And, and it requires you do this a few times a year because we all fall back into old habits. I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm honest. I, I, I literally, sometimes I, you know, it, it's natural to say, well, I'll take care of it myself. And the reality is you got to let your people grow. You got to let people, you know, learn and just because your way is um, is right for you doesn't mean that. The-